G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, smack that like button, and get ready for an uncomfortable story. Am I, 29 female, being cold and uncaring to my boyfriend, 37 male, or is this actually strange? I started dating someone that I have known for years. He used to be my boss at a previous job, and was also my neighbour. During the series of COVID lockdowns where we live, we reconnected, and I quickly fell for him. In the beginning, it was intense and lovely. He made me feel so important, beautiful, and sexy. He put me on a pedestal. He wanted to spend every minute with me, and would text me all the time because he said that, even just for a few hours, he missed me. All of a sudden, about a month into seeing each other, we started fighting about things that I just didn't understand or I couldn't empathize with. The fight will be a day long, sometimes two or three, and wouldn't stop even if I apologized or took responsibility or tried to change the mood with levity. For example, the first of our day-long fights was because I didn't text him goodnight before I fell asleep. I told him, I'm sorry, that's not something I had ever done with a partner before, but if that's what he wanted, I could try it out, because why not? Cute. This led him to tell me that he shouldn't have to ask for these things, that I should just want to do it, and that I don't care or think about him. He accused me of not being invested and playing games, and that he was considering breaking it off with me. I told him that I was in the gym, so I was going to finish my workout, take a breather to think about what he said, and then call him to discuss in a more personal way. He told me, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You're brushing me off. You care more about the gym than fixing things with me. Fights like this happen every four days or so, and I never know where they're going to come from. Once, after spending three days at his house, Friday evening, all Saturday, going to leave Sunday evening, when I said that I was going to head home, he got incredibly angry. He accused me of always having something better to do, not wanting to be around him, not caring, that I must be hiding something. Honestly, I just wanted to go into my own toilet again and shave. This particular argument got so heated, and I'm not even sure how, that when I told him I was done with the conversation and I wanted to go, he grabbed my bag out of my hand and threw it across the room. Even staying with him for a week didn't make him less upset when I left. Every time I hung out with him after, I had to tell him exactly when I planned on leaving, and even then it was, no, stay, stop, why are you always doing this to me? When we make up, it's magical. He will write me little love notes in a breakfast that he makes me. He will sit and brush my hair, unprompted, and sing to me. He will be so affectionate and tell everyone in the world that I am the woman of his life. He talks about how he wants children with me and looks forward to me being his wife and how he has never felt anything like I make him feel. I try to make all of his meals and get him gifts and show I care, but it never seems to be enough. Recently, my surrogate father passed away in my home country. My boyfriend offered to travel with me for as long as I wanted for support. He said that we could stay for months if I chose. Anything I needed. I was so thankful that he was being so supportive and that maybe living together for a while may ease his insecurities. Now that I live with him in self-isolation, I'm finding that no matter what I do, there is always something that he takes very personally. I really don't know if I'm the asshole here, so here are just a few examples. In the airport, I got a text from my ex wishing me condolences and to have a safe flight. I am on very good terms with him, and we've been broken up for two years. My current boyfriend got very upset that I texted him back. I said thanks, I needed that virtual cuddle. Talk later. He said it was inappropriate for me to ask for a hug from an ex. Not quite what I said, but okay. To the point of saying, why didn't you just stay with him then? I explained that he had nothing to worry about, but I wasn't going to cut someone I value from my life because he asked me to. He stayed silent and pouting the entire seven hour flight from Europe to NA. Because I work in GMT and wear an EST visiting my family now, I wake up early. My day starts at 4am EST for now. 
He can work anytime he wants, as his company has global teams in every time zone, and he won't miss out on anything. So he wakes up at 9. A day or so ago, he told me that it really hurt him that I didn't wait until 11 to have breakfast with him. When I tried to explain that, by 11, working the hours that I work, I would have skipped breakfast and lunch. I'm in recovery for an eating disorder, and skipping meals is very much not a part of my recovery plan. He told me that A, the doctors I work with don't know crap and eating on his schedule would make me feel better because it's more regular and with company, and B, that I should want to eat with him because sharing meals means a lot to him, and that if I cared, I would just do it. The night we arrived in the apartment that we're quarantining in, we fell asleep in the lovely, super king-sized bed here. The morning after, he accused me of being mad and cold because I didn't cuddle him at all that night, and he felt rejected. I tried to explain that, sorry, I passed out before him, and I've never been in a bed that big, so I didn't even know that I wasn't cuddling him. I was unconscious and lost in a sea of pillows, and it wasn't on purpose. He told me to stop pushing back on things that he said and just accept his feelings and apologize. He gets annoyed if I don't give him a kiss and a hug before I get out of bed, even if it's for a late night pee. He will huff loudly and then be cranky. I told him I'm just trying not to disturb his sleep, and he told me that my affection is more important than sleep, so I need to start doing it. A friend of mine bought me a Warhammer starter set for a simultaneous welcome home gift, sorry for your loss gift, and something to do in quarantine gift. For those of you that don't know Warhammer, they are small and intricate fantasy models that you build and paint. One of these models, the boss, I guess, is much larger and sometimes has multiple styles or ways to build it. I was reading through the starter guide to decide which style I wanted to build, and he said to me, Oh, so I guess you're going to build the big one then. I asked what he meant, and he said he just wished that I would have offered him to build the boss because he flew all this way for me. He won't let my dog sleep in the bed with me or let me hold her close to my face because she's gross. You care more about that dog than you do me. It's obvious. For a while, I have been able to cope and be patient with his emotions. But since we traveled, I think I'm starting to rapidly lose patience and feelings for him. I feel so guilty because he's a thousand kilometers away from any friends and family, and I don't know if I'm just walking around being totally unmindful and indifferent to how he feels. Is it maybe the stress of the death and sudden living together that's put me off? Should I be patient, or is he actually being too much? If not, how do I gently explain to someone that traveled so far for me that I am just not happy? And now in the comments, I'm not trying to be an ass or anything, but this guy is throwing up more red flags than I can count. Your 37-year-old boyfriend is acting 15 at best. To answer your question outright, he's being a lot. He's being so much that I'd almost worry about being able to get out of this relationship without dealing with some major issues, like him chasing you back home. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, but adults don't act like that. It's okay to be sweet and love your partner, but a healthy relationship isn't about constantly worrying about how the other person is going to react to everything you do. A healthy relationship is about choosing the person that allows you to be the best version of yourself you can be, not becoming the best person you can possibly be for all of your partner's needs while you forget about what you want. You're a human too. What's gonna happen when you wanna spend a day with friends? I doubt he's gonna let that happen unless he comes with you or follows you. In my opinion, this is only going to get worse. He's gonna hold on tighter to you, wanting to control even more of your life as time passes. I'm sorry for the honesty, but I'd plan an exit strategy that involves a fast getaway. This guy worries me. And OP replies, thank you. That's what my gut has been telling me, but it is hard to stick to when the lovely part starts again. Unfortunately, we have had many breakups where I've walked away, and then out of the pure romance of his texts, I'm convinced that he loves me wholly, and I was just being a cow. Rinse, repeat. We should have a serious talk about whether we are better off friends. 
is something that I have said a few times, and now there's a rule he's placed that we can't even hint at breaking up in arguments or discussions because the relationship would be better off if we were both sure that it would never end. As I type that out now, I realize it sounds crazy, but in the moment, it feels romantic. Yes, in a healthy relationship, an argument should never throw around the words break up, but he sounds completely suffocating, so you should go with your own heart and best judgment on the issue. The fact that you are outlining complaints so succinctly, I think, is evidence that you are done with this relationship deep down. This guy sounds like a real nut job. Get out while you can. Throwing the bag across the room is a psycho move. He sounds really unstable and self-centered. By no means is this anything you've been doing. It's all him by the sounds of it. And edit, I glanced over the dog part, because it was brutally clear that this guy needs to take a hike, but not liking the dog and letting you love her? Now that's where I really draw the line. Send that douchebag packing. F that guy. And OP replies, to be honest, I'm hurt by his actions and words but what hurts me the most is his feelings about her. Like, he told me he would love it if I left her with someone else for a year while we traveled together, and that crushed me. Thank you for the confirmation. I've been feeling very confused, and this feedback has made me feel a lot more confident. And now, on to the update. Thank you. My life has improved dramatically since this sub gave me the courage and clarity to leave. I have a better job, my disorder is managed, I sleep better, my dog is happier, and I have the best partner anyone could ask for. It took a while of fighting and being firm, and ended as everyone suggested that it might. Violently. But I've been free for over a year now. You were all right. If I hadn't left, I would have ended up cold in a ditch somewhere. Instead, I'm going to court in two weeks to hold him responsible for the violence and emotional abuse that he put me through. Really, truly, thank you. And now in the comments, great job. You should be proud. Keep taking care of yourself and don't accept any more crap from anyone. I hope everything goes well in court. And OP replies, thank you. Whether it does or doesn't, I know at least I'm making him feel a fraction of the fear that he made me feel and that's enough for me. I am so happy for you, and so envious. I am you, one year ago. OP replies, You deserve better, and will find better, once you shake your leech. The first few weeks may be painful, you may feel guilt and shame. They will do everything they can to make you feel like a monster. They will use their old tricks, bring back the old them, the sweet, kind, generous, loving them. It's a trick, and like candy, it may be sweet, but it'll rot you from the inside out. Once you have some distance, you'll remember what happiness is again. You'll see that the little moments of reprieve that you get from their anger and abuse weren't rewards. They were manipulation. You'll start to recognize yourself again. You may also recognize that, along with the trauma they might have given you, they have given you something extremely valuable. An unshakable confidence. You don't have to do it alone. You can seek a professional, and they will help you see your value. You got this. It's always interesting how obvious this all seems when written down from the outside, and how muddy these situations get when you're actually living through them. I'm glad she got out. That guy feels like a nightmare. I'm guilty of this. I was in a toxic relationship. I didn't see it at the time, although I was warned several times. Now I feel almost sick when I remember some of the things, and although I thought I'd be able to stay friendly with him as an adult, I can't stand seeing him. After that, I always ask when meeting story like that, if this exact thing was a story told to you by your friend, what would be your advice to them? Our next post is titled, I, 17 male, don't know how to tell my dad, 32 male, that my stepmom, 37 female, hates me. Hey, this might be a long one, I'm sorry. I really don't know what to do about my situation, and I don't have anyone close to me to give me advice, so I thought that here, maybe I can get some advice. I have an amazing dad who raised me since my mum passed away when I was five years old. He is my friend, my supporter, and someone who I want to be like when I grow up. 
When my dad first introduced my stepmom to me, I was 10 years old and she was very nice to me and he looked so happy that we met and hoped that we could get along. They got married when I was 13 and I was so happy that me and my dad had a new member in our family. I thought me and stepmom were getting along until I think a few months after their honeymoon, she told me one morning that we just need to pretend to like each other around my dad, but when he's not here, that I shouldn't bother her. Honestly, this shattered me, but I agreed because I didn't know what else to do. After that day, whenever it was just me and stepmom, she would say things to get to me, and I would just not say anything. I'm introverted and don't like confrontation, so I just took it and thought over time she would get over it, but it actually got worse. She would talk about my height and weight and say I was a funny looking version of my dad. I hoped my dad would notice, but he didn't. He actually thinks me and stepmom are so close and that she understands me. He looks so happy with her that maybe it's worth not saying anything and giving it time. This year, my stepmom started picking on me around my dad, and he's either joined in or ignored it. I have voiced that what she says makes me uncomfortable and hurts, but my dad says that she's just teasing and doesn't mean it to hurt me. Well, right now, I'm at my wit's end, and I'm scared that I'm angry, frustrated at my stepmom and my dad. Dad was away for work, and it was just me and stepmom at home. She got stuck in the dryer and I had to help get her out, I mean, she had a party at home with a couple of her friends. I helped set the house up and cook dinner, cause dad asked me to help out, which was fine. After they ate and just hung out, they were hanging out on the porch when I heard stepmom and her friends talk very loud outside my window while I was in my room. Stepmom's friends talked about how lucky stepmom was to have a nice husband and a house. When they mentioned how nice it was that I cooked for them, stepmom told them that I was annoying and weird, and that she hated me and living with me, and that she couldn't wait till I was 18 to kick me out. I was shocked that she hated me that much, but I didn't know why. To be honest, I thought we were tolerating each other, but to hate me, I must have done something, but I can't think of what I did. I've been kind of down since that day, which was two weeks ago, and I thought that I was past the initial feelings. But at rugby training today, I burst into tears and my coach sent me home, so I drove to a beach and I cried. I was feeling so much that I honestly can't describe my emotions. I eventually fell asleep in my car. Now I'm here hoping that I can get advice on how to talk to my dad about it, because I'm scared about how he will react. I don't want my dad to be sad because he does so much for me, but I'm not strong like him. I'm really struggling. My question is, how can I approach this conversation with my dad about my stepmom hating me, or should I tell him at all? And now in the comments, record her. I am dead effing serious. Not once. Like look into spy crap and record her when he's not around. Your father married a predatory, abusive narcissist who is lying to him for security. The only way to remotely get him to believe you is to have some actual evidence, because she straight up engineered this to abuse you and keep him unaware of it. That is exactly what I was going to suggest. Dad is unlikely to believe OP fully when it's been so many years of them getting along great. People aren't great at shredding everything they thought they knew about someone and a situation without undeniable cold evidence staring them in the face. And it is guaranteed that someone as manipulative as her will gaslight dad and throw OP under the bus. Providing video evidence is probably the only way dad will believe OP to the level required, sadly. And OP says, I will try. Currently, right now, I'm not in a stable mindset, and the thought of getting evidence like recording is making me feel sick. I know if I don't do anything that it'll get worse and be my fault, so I really appreciate this advice. Sunshine, it's not 100% your fault. I'm realizing this is painful for you. Try not to be hard on yourself. Your stepmom is a funk knuckle, and your dad needs to know. I agree with recording her. I also think if you have a counselor at the school, it's not a bad idea to go and talk with them. They might not be able to directly fix the issue, but I'm sure they can help you emotionally deal with this while you figure out how to get your dad to understand what's happening. Now back up to the post, there is an edit. Someone questioned my dad's age, and I'm sorry, but it was supposed to be 42, but I can't change it. 
Thank you everyone that provided advice and kind words. It means a lot to me. I have read every comment and have an idea on how to approach this situation. I'm honestly terrified of the outcome being negative, but the encouragement and support are making this a bit easier to deal with. I am going to talk to my dad on Sunday and show him this post. I hope it goes well, and I hope all of you stay safe and take care. Edit 2. I'm not sure that I'm able to do what I plan to do because Amy just took my car keys away and she wants my phone, but I won't give it to her, so she is waiting for my dad to take it off of me because apparently I'm doing drugs, but I told her I'm not, I've been at the beach. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to stop because I can't handle it. I'm sorry. And now onto the update. For all the support and advice I received, I really appreciate and am wholeheartedly so grateful for all of those who DM'd me to see how I was. Thank you. This will be long because a lot happened, but many things are still not resolved. Trigger warning? I will mention self-harm, so please if it might trigger you, please don't read further. I wish I was able to say that I followed the advice that was provided and now everything is better. But some things in life don't play out the way that we want it to, and we can either let it destroy us or make us better. After writing my edits where my stepmom was taking my things away and assuming that I was on drugs, I started recording on my phone, and she said a lot through the door. Many things about my mum and me, and just plain hateful words that I don't want to repeat on here. I fell asleep while I was barricading the door with my body when my dad demanded me to open the door. At this point, I don't remember much of what happened, but my stepmom told me that I had to leave the house, and my dad agreed. I didn't know who to call, but I decided to call my coach and he picked me up, and I was a crying mess. He didn't ask any questions, but just told me that I was safe, and if I needed to talk, he was here for me. I stayed over one night, when the next day, dad picked me up. Stepmom was not at home when we got there. Dad told me that we needed to talk. We had breakfast, and my dad spoke to me about many things my stepmother told him, and I couldn't believe all the lies she told him. It was a long talk, but in summary, it was my use of drugs and alcohol, how I disrespect her in our home, I don't do my responsibilities like chores at home, I'm nasty to her when dad is not around. He asked me why I was acting like this, and if I had a problem with stepmom that I should have spoken to him. I let him talk, and when he was crying and asked if I had anything to say, I was so lost for words that I knew that whatever I said, my dad was on my stepmom's side. So I told him that I wanted him to watch the recording of the incident that I can send through as an email attachment and the link to my Reddit post, and then we can talk more. I also said that I didn't want to be here when he was reading and watching, so I'll go for a drive, and he can text me when he's done and is ready to talk. He was hesitant at first, but I told him that it was important to me, so he agreed and left in my car to the beach, and I sent him the email with the video attached and the link to my Reddit post. I don't know how long I waited, but many thoughts were going through my head. I was missing my mum so much, and what if my dad still sided with my stepmom? What can I do now? I then fell asleep at the beach spot and was woken up by a police officer knocking on my car door and asking for my name. After confirming my name, he advised me to get out of my car and to hand over my keys to him and to follow him to his car. He then handcuffed me and assured me that I wasn't in trouble, but that this was a welfare check because someone made a call that I was possibly suicidal. I didn't talk after he told me that, and all I remember was just crying. He made me sit in the back of the police car until the ambulance came, and they took me to the hospital. I was asked many questions, and was evaluated, and was told that I was depressed and may have extreme anxiety. The physician did say that I might have other things, but will require further testing and some sessions with a psychiatrist. My dad came and visited me while in hospital, and when I saw him, he looked really tired. When he spoke, it sounded like he was crying, and he told me that he called the police on me because of the video recording that I did. He heard everything my stepmom said to me, but he also saw my cuts on my thighs, and was scared and thought the worst. Honestly, I never watched the video, so I didn't know my thighs were visible. 
After our cry, we spoke about a few things. I told my dad that I don't feel comfortable living with stepmom after everything she has said and done to me over the years, and I'm not sure that I can handle being around her because I don't trust her. We spoke about arrangements, and knowing my dad still loves my stepmom, and I didn't want him to choose between us. I told him that I could talk to Coach if I could stay with him, and after calling him, he agreed. I've also been admitted to an agency that will support me because I am mentally unwell. I have been to one session and am waiting on another evaluation to be done on me and some testings with my GP so they can diagnose me. I'm currently staying with my rugby coach who has been an amazing pillar. He has set out some house rules, but I respect the fella and don't mind following them. My coach even set a date next week for me and dad to catch up on. My coach is an awesome dude. I previously thought of him as just a coach who wanted our rugby team to win, but when he allowed me to stay over, he showed so much care for me, and I saw a different side of him, and understand how much he cares for my team. He has a lovely wife, but I'm kinda anxious whenever it's just me and her at their house. That's it right now. My dad lives at home with my stepmom, and is trying to sort that out. I have many appointments to get the help that I need, and a lot of schoolwork to catch up on, and rugby trainings to attend. I've taken a leave of absence from my Macca's job. I'm gonna miss going to the beach for a while, but I understand that it's not a forever thing, so I hope that the next time I go there, I'm not crying my eyes out. I'm kinda working on being okay away from my dad and stepmom after those of you who shared your similar experiences. Someday I will be okay. Thank you all who advised me and encouraged me. Those who reached out through DM, thank you for the kind words and reaching out. I'm not sure if I'll update again, but maybe I'll let you know if something happens in the future. Take care everyone. Also be kind to one another, and most of all, be kind to yourself because you deserve it. And now in the comments, everyone needs a coach like him in their life. Dad failed his role and is still staying with the stepmom? I bet he wouldn't have believed OP if he hadn't recorded anything. The saddest part is how much OP looks up to his dad. The poor kid thinks, or is trying to convince himself, that his dad is doing right by him by allowing him to stay with his coach. This kid doesn't even know what real parental love feels like. It is so, so sad. If I've learned anything from Reddit, it's that a shocking number of parents choose romantic relationships over their own children. It is awful. OP's dad is a piece of crap, and his stepmom is even worse. Poor kid. Truly, what an unrepentant trash pile of a human. Imagine finding out your wife is abusing your kid, and thinking the solution is to kick your kid onto the couch of a random adult that you barely know, so you can stay with your child abusing wife in peace. F this guy. Yeah, even if the stepmom and kid were equally guilty of something, your underage child should take precedent as he is underage. On top of that, the stepmom is a monster. I can never understand this centrist attitude of never picking a side, because it's ultimately punishing the innocent. What a joke of a parent. So after all the trauma the stepmom caused, OP's dad didn't kick her out immediately and is still living with her trying to sort things out? What a piece of crap. OP has been suffering for years, and his father is only upset now because his ideal family dream is shattered. OP deserves better parents. His stepmom is an abuser, and his dad is an enabler. I hope OP gets karmic justice, and maybe even gets to see it unfold right in front of his eyes. What a shit show. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down below, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.